We're now going to have a series of 10-minute talks about interesting things that people have been doing with Racket recently. And we're going to start with Ryan Culpepper talking about templates and fixing some code from this morning. Yes. So Matthew showed an example of syntax parse earlier. And syntax parse uh, lets you write down annotations that give you better error reporting. And it's more flexible in terms of, of what kinds of syntax it can specify, like groups of related things, like a, uh, an image keyword followed by an image expression. Okay, but it's it's in in a couple places. It's still kind of clunky to work with, right? So you have this uh, this series of optional things. You might have an X, and if you don't, then there's some default that you want to use. You might have a Y, and there's some default there too. And it's just it's readable, but it's a little bit verbose. It's a little bit unpleasant looking. Uh, so I'm going to start out by showing you how to fix this using a template, which is a replacement for the syntax form, or hash quote, as you saw it this morning. Okay, so first of all, we need to require the appropriate library. And it currently lives in syntax, parse, experimental, template. And we're going to change this hash quote to use the template form. Close the paren. Okay, and the f what we can do is get rid of these defaults. Okay, so I'm just going to do the x here. Uh, we would like a default x of zero. So I'm going to get rid of this part. And now syntax parse has a notion of not defined or absent for attributes. So if the optional clause isn't found, then this attribute is marked absent. Okay, and normally there's something you can do, you can get the value and it turns out to be false but not a syntax object, and you can do this complicated con based on that, which is just not really pleasant. Uh, using template, sorry, I'm trying to get this all on the screen at once, you write question mark, question mark, a pattern, uh, sorry, a template, and then another template. And by the way, if anyone has suggestions about a better little <laughs> marker than question mark, question mark, uh, I'm open to changing it. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, maybe tilde question mark, because that, that, be, that would be better. So the way to interpret this is, if everything in the first template Oops. is defined, use that. If anything in that template is missing, use the second one. And so that gives us the default behavior that we want. If the optional X clause shows up, then X expert has a value, so we use the first one, we use that value. If it isn't, then X expert doesn't have a value, and so we use the second template, which is zero. Okay, and then I can do the rest. I can do the same thing with the rest of these. That was one. Direction default was 90. All right, and that works. And let's, whoops, let's try it out. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Run, and we still get to play with the duck and the fish. Okay, so this is just a better way of, of using absent values and defaults that doesn't make you work with the clunky default syntax. 
Okay. Any questions? No. All right. Uh, so I don't have uh, a nice tie-in to Matthew's example for the rest of the features that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I'm going to write a simple, silly little macro called table that I want to take a series of alternating keyword and expression pairs and turn it into a, a hash table. Right? And I would use this hash function that it turns out also takes alternating key value pairs, but not grouped in any way. No parentheses, just alternation. Okay. So I can use syntax parse for this. And we already have this nice feature for matching repeated grouped things together, which is seek. And I'm going to match a keyword and then an expression. I'm going to match any number of those. And let me just start out by saying, OK, and let's try this example. So it says that's okay. What if I just have one of those? That doesn't work. Uh, what if I have that? Extract expression. Okay, so the pattern is kind of doing what we want. So now the question is how can I feed these things, having validated that they're alternating keywords and expressions to the hash function without parentheses? So here's what doesn't work. Uh, that doesn't work. Because I, I want them to be together, and this is only saying repeat the args. But I have a bunch of keywords too. So I could try that. And that doesn't work. For a funny reason. Uh, actually, so I could try. The, I could put the quote in front of the keyword, which I'm going to need to do anyway. And I get an answer, but I get the wrong answer because uh, I put all the keywords and then all the arguments. But that's not what I want. I want the keywords then the arguments. So it turns out that there's a funny little pattern that you learn having to do with like repeated ellipses. Does anyone know how to do this? OK. So the way that you would do this with syntax is Let's see, how does this work? Something like that? Yeah, so I, I got it wrong, not surprisingly. Oh, I need one more here, I think. Maybe? No, and you had two more. All right, so that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So instead, Uh, template gives you a splicing form. Oh, and I still need the, the quote. Okay. Uh, so this just wraps around some set of uh, sub-templates and says repeat all of them. And so we get the alternating keyword expressions again. Okay. Um, and you can combine this with the question question thing and have something that either shows up or doesn't depending on whether something is bound 
Uh, this basically just makes working with the additional power of syntax parse for things like grouped repetitions and missing pieces much, much easier to use, right? And so instead of showing you template meta functions, which are basically just stolen from Red X, uh, imagine if you had Red X meta functions for syntax templates. Uh, I'll just take questions. Is, yeah. is, is, is there any connection between question mark uh, add sign and question mark question mark? Uh, they both start with question mark and they're both recognized by template. That's the only connection. Okay, so at is supposed to be reminiscent of unquote splicing. Okay, That's question mark, question mark is, is even worse than because of that. Because yeah. it like it's, it's supposed to be a little bit uh, mnemonic for the, the ternary if operator in other languages. <laughs> so question mark all of it? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. How uh, does template need to take in a steps in order to provide source location for the resulting object? There are there so there's also the rest of the the family. There's template slash loc, okay. there's quasi template and quasi template slash loc also. Okay. Uh, and it's a little bit weird actually because in some cases you don't actually want to relocate something. Um, but yeah. So if I import a template with the name syntax, will it just work for all of my old macros? Yes, okay. it should. If not, file a bug report. No. Uh, and hopefully this will be hopefully going, this will be, mark, question mark in macro. right. Well, it also, unless you import the binding of question mark, question mark from syntax temp, uh, parse experimental template, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so hopefully this will go into the core and just become syntax at some point in the future, but not for this release. The core what? The core. This, like you will be able to write hash quote and then use all the, the question mark at, question mark, question mark, or whatever name that turns into. Even without the syntax parse? Uh, if you wanted to, yeah. Okay. Who's up next?